Oh, well, that's not tiny. That's not tiny at all. That's a beautiful sized potato in here. Look at what we've got right here. Grown in a green stalk vertical garden. Guten gardening, everybody. Well, potato harvest season is in full swing here at Guten Gardening, and today I'm gonna to be harvesting potatoes from this green stalk vertical garden system. And we're gonna see how well we did. I've got a nice variety of potatoes in the five 10 inch tiers that this original green stock system offers. And I can't wait to see what's inside. So let's go ahead and pull this green stock apart and get this harvest started. Tell you what, the top of this green stock where we water everything is popped off. And I think I know why. See, I think this is actually a good sign because as the potatoes develop, they start to push the potting mix up and I can definitely see some right through here but i'm not going to uncover those yet oh that's heavy let's get these off and i'm going to get this top layer positioned over here where we're going to empty it out now as i get into this harvest there's a couple of things you should know one two years ago we did a red white and blue potato growing in a potato harvest and we love that harvest we learned some things from that harvest like the best production for those potatoes was at the top three tiers and then last season, we tried to grow potatoes in here. The potatoes that we used weren't the best and we didn't get much of any kind of harvest. So we're really hopeful for a better harvest this season. Once again, the planting was six potatoes, one in each of the pockets. That gave us the opportunity to plant a grand total of 30 potatoes in here, 30 seed potatoes. And each of the potatoes in here, except this top layer, are certified seed potatoes. Now one thing of course I'm immediately noticing in here is our delightful friend strawberry spinach which seems to want to grow everywhere. I promise you I haven't planted that in a couple years. And I'm seeing some potatoes here at the surface. Now I mentioned the first year we did a red, white, and blue harvest. I love growing lots of colors in here. This first layer is the purple magic molly potatoes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest one pocket at a time at the beginning here. I'm not gonna empty these out, at least for this first one. I'm just gonna pull this right out. And I was feeling around right down in here and I noticed some pretty substantial size in here. The purple magic molly potatoes are typically, I would say, when we're growing them a little bit bigger than this, maybe a little bit smaller than this on average. And so this is a really nice start. There you go. Remember these tiers are 10 inches deep and where I planted these seed potatoes was somewhere right about here. So we've got about three inches of mix below and then the, the seed potato itself and then anything else that's grown from that is what we're getting. And you'll notice that some of these look like the vines are still alive. And the problem is that we're well over a hundred days into this process and some of the potatoes have really died back and so the different varieties are expected to take a different amount of time, but I can't leave them in there for too long and create a problem where we're getting rotting or anything like that. Now, that being said, what I could do, I suppose, is to harvest the tears one at a time as they're fully ready, but I wanna get in here and get this harvest going, and I'm seeing really nice size so far. You know, there's been a question in the minds of some folks as to whether or not you could actually grow potatoes in the green stock system because the depth etc well as i said that first year we grew there we go that first year we grew we had some pretty good success from the green stock system so we know that we can get some results out of here i'm removing now the system that we had in place where uh, it's like our custom system here where we hold the vines up while they are developing there we go another nice purple on top now there are plenty of different varieties of and different colors of potatoes out there some really nice size here uh, i'm curious if you've tried a color other than say the the traditional yellow or the traditional white what other color was your favorite now in case you're wondering this 
magic molly, this purple magic molly potato is a waxier potato. It's one that does a really nice job holding together whenever you're baking it. Now, my favorite way of eating these magic mollies, I like to leave the skin on unless there's some kind of problem with the skin. And quite simply, I go in with some salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil, and I roast them. I really like these as roasted potatoes. Now I can tell that this one died back. You saw the life that was still on the other, the other plants there, but well, this one died back early. And what you're seeing here is the difference between a plant that has been able to survive for that 100 days and a plant that is going to die back early because the size of the potatoes in here, especially on this side, because most of the life was on the other side here. The size of these potatoes is clearly a good bit smaller and they're still gonna be tasty, but they've also then, you know, been in here sitting for a good bit longer at this state. They're not gonna get any bigger. Once that plant dies back, they're not, those potatoes inside aren't gonna be growing any larger. So we definitely got more and we got bigger plants or bigger, excuse me, bigger potatoes on the other side versus what we're seeing here. But these are still really nice tasting. Now I'll put in a little shot here of what the inside of these purple magic molly potatoes look like because I want you to see that appearance. And then I also want you to see the interior of the other potatoes that we have growing because this next tier that I'm going to show you after I finish harvesting this one is also a pretty unique color, pretty unique potato. And I said that they're all certified except this top tier. And the reason I said that is because this top tier of potatoes is actually a direct result of our previous year's harvests. Well, I would argue we're off to a really great start with these purple magic mollies check out tier number two take off our watering tray and i can definitely see the skin here a couple of potatoes exposed a little bit maybe you can see the color of what we've got here this is adirondack red now we've grown adirondack blue in the past these adirondack reds are really cool because they have that reddish pinkish skin and then let's take a look at the interior of this one. I'm just gonna use this small one here. Do you see the pink coloration on the inside? So you've got this nice pink color and the pink skin. So again, we've grown the Adirondack Blues, which are fantastic, but these are supposed to be filled with antioxidants. And again, you can see some of that solanine damage here. You can also see how it looks different. You don't see it so much as a green color, but where this one was exposed to the sunlight because I didn't come back in. I should have mounted this back over. But here we go with our Adirondack Reds. Let's go ahead and get this first one pulled out. Again, completely dead for sure. I'm gonna try to wheel down in here and see. I got these, oh, there we go. This is the size I'm looking for. Somewhere around in here is a really nice size for these Adirondack Reds based on what we've seen. Ooh, nice. Yeah, these are these are a really nice sized potato coming in here. You know, it's one of the things that you try to figure out as you're growing potatoes, how well they'll perform in your area. These Adirondack Reds, if they perform as well as the Adirondack Blues, and if you've never seen that video, I'll put a link to our Adirondack Blue Harvest video. But in terms of taste, in terms of size and production, look at these. I mean, this is turning into a really nice tier right here. That's a fantastic sized potato. But these are also another one of those waxy potatoes. They're supposed to really maintain well whenever you cook them, maintain their structure. They have a really nice potato taste. And how about this for interesting? You're growing potatoes that can give you pinkish red mashed potatoes. What do you think about that? We've done purple mashed potatoes. We've had blue mashed potatoes here. How about some pinkish red mashed potatoes? How about that for color? Well, I'm guessing, based on what I'm seeing in the production of this plant, that this is probably one of the ones that died back the earliest. Although, there's still four or five nice potatoes attached to this one. 
you know, when we talk about vertical gardening and you'll see, there's another one, you'll see we talk about it quite a bit on this channel. If you've looked through this channel, we have some of our own, I would say, creative setups. We've grown potatoes vertically for a while now. But when we talk about vertical gardening, we talk about it as a means to save space. We talk about it as a means to grow more food in our limited area and as a way of, wow, experimenting with different plants that we might not normally have enough room to grow. You know, potatoes do take up a decent amount of space, but this green stalk vertical garden does not take up a large amount of space. It takes up more vertical space than it does horizontal space, if you want to call it that. So with a, a setup like this, with five different tiers, six pockets in each tiers, you have the ability to grow, well, in this case, we're trying to grow 30 potato plants, but a whole range of options in terms of what you could be experimenting around with, what you could be trying to grow in or on a balcony, uh, what you could be trying to grow in our case, just on our back patio here, that's not taking up space in the rest of our garden where we might not have enough room to allocate to, let's say in this case, the amount of potatoes we would like to grow. All right, this is definitely the plant that died back earliest because there's hardly anything on that plant, but the rest of them, oh, there you go, there's another one, but the rest of the plants here performed quite nicely. So let me show you how these Adirondack red potatoes turned out. Aren't they beautiful? Again, that interior color is going to be fantastic. And thank you so much to our community member who hooked us up with some of these seed potatoes that he had laying around as extras. I'll take that any day of the week. Now, these next two tiers are both Charlotte potatoes. These are certified seed potatoes that we got from the Wood Prairie Family Farm. This is our first time growing the Charlotte potatoes, but they're supposed to be a bit of a smaller potato with a yellow skin and a yellow flesh. And the way I saw them described was as a good salad potato. They're also supposed to be an early producer. Well, we didn't harvest them early, but let's see what we got in here. I can definitely see the beginnings of some potatoes right here. Ooh, ooh, nice. Oh, well, that's not tiny. That's not tiny at all. That's a beautiful sized potato in here. Again, I don't know how, how productive these are necessarily going to be. This is the size I was expecting. You kind of got a, a more oblong shape to these. That's what I'm expecting as well. But I mean, we'll take it 100%. I wasn't sure about this variety. Again, we definitely have had better luck with the certified seed potatoes than we have with just store-bought in many cases. Any additional potato harvest we get this season is gonna feel like a blessing after the struggles of last season for us. Last season was just so difficult. Just so much of what we depend on to feed our family wasn't there in the form of our potatoes. We really, really struggled immensely. I, I don't like that fact at all. But that's, that's what happens from time to time. I even did a video where I talked about our struggles with potatoes last season. Now oh, that's interesting. That, that plant was still looking like it was alive, but not much of anything from that one. All right, but still looking pretty good so far, I would argue. Let's get over to this plant and see if this one did any better. There we go. Look at that, just all came up at once. Looking really nice. As always, I like to tell you how we took care of these during the season. You can probably see a little bit of the bone meal here that didn't get washed in. That's that white stuff on top. Uh, we fed it twice over the growing season. The last time was when it was flowering. So it's been a little while since we fed it. And for the last couple of weeks, well, truth be told, we, we got a decent amount of rain over the last couple of weeks, but we hadn't been watering this for the last couple of weeks because as we get close to time of harvest with our potatoes, we stop watering in order to try to prevent any problems with the potatoes rotting or anything like that. So that's something to keep in mind. This one's 
from next door. All right, there we go. Um, that's something to keep in mind. If you're growing potatoes, you don't want to overwater, especially at the end, as you'll create some pretty big problems for yourself. It's not something you want to have happen. You go 100 days, 90 days, however many days that your, your potatoes are supposed to take to grow, and you spend all that time growing your potatoes, and then what happens? You overwater at the end, and you can't store your potatoes or they rot out completely. That is a, that's an absolute nightmare waiting to happen. All right, I feel a really nice sized couple of potatoes in here. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, I'm content. I'm very contented with how this harvest is going. I wish you could have experienced last year's disappointment with me in the moment. The video I released at that time talked about how we had really failed with our potatoes last year, but you know, I'm, I'm sitting there trying to harvest, trying my best to <laughs> not be too disappointed, but it was, it was incredibly difficult to go through and see what we had been waiting on not really come to fruition. Well, lessons learned. I think we're doing a lot better this year overall. And I'll also say that's in the face of some of the struggles that this growing season has presented. And I'm sure if you're growing in zone five, Wisconsin, you probably know what I'm talking about in terms of the dryness, the heat, etc. There we go. There's tier number three. All right, here's tier number four. And you can see this potato has some solanine damage. So this will be the one that I use as an opportunity to show you what the interior of these Charlottes look like. You see that deep color here? Let me get it at an angle so you can see the, the deep yellow color. So that's what we're looking into be a tasty potato, I think. So yeah, there's a part of me that, that struggles a little bit, even wasting one potato, but that one definitely had some, some pretty bad solanine damage. And so it's not like we're gonna eat it. What we would have otherwise used it for would likely be as a seed potato for next season. But I think it's important for you to see exactly what we're growing here. So I don't mind cutting that up. All right, this one had died back pretty quickly and yet, Still got some pretty nice production here in this first of our little bins. Let's check this one out too while we're at it. Right next door, oh, there we go. Nice, very nice. There's the mother potato right there. It's fallen apart completely. It's really interesting for me anyway to take a look sometimes at the size of the mother potato that we planted, because sometimes you get some pretty incredible production, even from those smaller seed potatoes. There you go. What do you think about these harvests? You enjoying potato harvest season? I mean, for us, this is definitely one of the highlights of the year, getting out here and being able to finally harvest the crops that we've been waiting, you know, 100 plus days on look at what we've got right here grown in a green stalk vertical garden thank you very much these original tiers have 10 inches of depth 10 inches of depth and remember one of the things that we like about the green stalk vertical garden if you've never grown in a green stalk we definitely can recommend it but one of the things that we really like about it is the fact that we water at the top and that water travels down. You can see the center hole here, but it travels down the entire system. So it's a simple way to grow. And on top of that, they even have the automated watering systems now. So what that means is you can, with a Bluetooth, come out and water. You don't even have to think about it really. <laughs> well, to be fair, we're out here most days anyway. So we're always thinking about it, <laughs> but I mean, it's just one of the benefits of this type of setup. Yes, we have other vertical garden setups that we've created. We have other vertical garden setups just in general. But I really like the fact that this setup is incredibly durable. I mean, you wouldn't even know it given the fact that they don't look it. But some of our systems here, we're going to be moving into our fourth year. And those systems have been outside, left outside the entire time with no damage to them, really. That's a pretty cool thing, especially considering our zone five winters. All right, there you go. There is tier number four. Let's move to the bottom tier in a new variety. All right, our last tier. These are yellow fin potatoes. It looks like they 
actually most all of them still have some green left on them i don't know what that'll mean for overall size but the yellowfin potato in our experience has been a little bit smaller for us there you go you can see some of that a little bit smaller aspect too although this is definitely on the smaller small side these are really tasty i'll cut one of these open as well let me just see if there's anything else down in here what i'm noticing right away is that this is definitely much drier than any of the other tiers and so i'm guessing that's a user error meaning that when we did come out here to water these because we don't have these set up to the automatic water when we did come out here to water these we may not have watered it quite long enough so that's something to keep in mind let me take one of the smaller potatoes here and cut it open so you can see what the interior of the yellow fin looks like it's pretty similar i think to the charlotte in terms of color you've got just all around pretty similar to the charlotte i would say this is another really nice good or true potato taste i've seen that description a couple of times now for some of these potatoes all right let's get these out of here i'm guessing we're going to see the same thing that we saw our first year growing in these green stalks growing potatoes in these green stalks which is that our potatoes at the bottom and I'm, I'm guessing it was probably user error then too do not perform as well as the potatoes in the upper tier and that makes me wonder if what we shouldn't do is i mean if we're seeing really nice results in the other tiers if we're going to grow potatoes in here in the future which we are spoiler alert we'll keep growing potatoes in our green stalk but maybe that bottom tier becomes something else maybe we plant something else that is a little less sensitive we'll call it than our potatoes because this well that's not what we want to see coming out of even one tier when we could potentially take advantage of some of the other vegetables that we like to grow I mean, we've grown green beans in here we've grown squash eggplant lots of options here oh you know what i'm noticing something else too i think i should probably point this out you see how stringy these stems look these stems are half the size half the diameter i would say of most of the other potatoes that we grew in here so it seems to me that the development was off just something was off here with these yellow fins for sure and well, we're still getting some potatoes but now it makes me even more grateful for the production that we got in the other bins because if this were the entirety of the harvest that would be a little bit tougher to digest as is we got plenty out of this green stock for me to call this a successful harvest this is actually the biggest yellow fin potato that we pulled out of here again i'm not going to complain we got plenty really nice potatoes out of here so let me show you what our entire harvest now came to well in my mind that is another successful green stock vertical garden harvest I mean, take a look at the varieties the colors a lot of different potatoes here yes one of our tiers didn't turn out but four out of five isn't bad and as i mentioned in the video i'm pretty sure some user error was involved in that fifth tier not turning out so we will definitely continue the tradition of growing potatoes in our Greenstock Vertical Gardens, and we hope you'll consider joining us as well. Now there is a coupon for $10 off any order of $75 or more in the description of this video. So if you're interested in taking a look at Greenstocks, maybe you never have before, you can check that out and get a little discount there as well. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's potato harvest video. And if you did, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.